Hi everyone, thank you for joining me in my latest video today. I'm so excited to show to you Linda Ravenscroft's new book, um, which is Naughty Fairies 2. I have Naughty Fairies 1 and it is one of my favourite books in my collection. Um, we're very lucky to have um, Linda Ravenscroft in our arsenal of things to colour. She's a, a very, very talented artist comes from a little place in the UK um, called Glastonbury. <laughs> I'm sure you've probably all heard of it. That's where a shop is and you can pop in there if you're lucky enough to be in the UK and sometimes she's in there. So this is her, uh, her latest work and we're going to do a flip through and we're also going to do a colour along. So as I understand it there are, as I've counted, there are 14 pages in this incredible book. This is on 300 GSM paper and I have used watercolours on it. I've thrown every medium at it under the sun and it copes beautifully. They're single sided, it's spiral bound, you can't ask for better quality. And at £9.99 per book, <coughs> it is just, yeah, you can't ask for more. If you want to practice watercolour in a colouring book, this is perfect. So. Here are Linda's, um, where you can find Linda's work. I will also link it down below so that you can just click on the link. So on the back it says, a magical selection of original artworks by internationally renowned fairy and fantasy artist Linda Ravencroft. Linda Ravencroft, sorry, isn't that true? Exclusively available for you to use watercolour paint or simply just colour. 300 GSM artist quality paper, single sided images allowing you to frame your masterpieces once complete and also markers if you should choose because these are grayscale. Explore a world of fantasy and create your own amazing coloured artworks and I think she has a gallery where you can share them so let's get into it. I've done enough waffle. So on the front cover which is glossy and shiny and lovely um, there is a little bit about Linda and um, her works and how she started. And we get straight into her glorious images. I'm going to have to bring you out slightly, so excuse my messy desk. Um, okay. And each image usually has a title, and I love that. Equally, Linda's work is usually online, and I go and have a look, and I follow her colours. The colour along we're going to do today is spec well Linda's version is anyway so I'm just fingers crossed that mine will be too so this is image one this is a touch of frost isn't she beautiful look at that can you imagine that we could put stickles on the bottom there or even just white gel pen to make it look like she's all frosty what a beautiful image so usually I just google Linda Ravenscroft the title of the image and you'll get one of her printed works, which I would love to own and have my, on my wall, one of her works. Um, and they usually come up that they're for sale. And um, you can emulate the image or just use it for inspiration. So image number two is Deadly Nightshade. Deadly Nightshade Fairy. It says Belladonna on mixed, paint, on mixed media. This is how Linda's done it. So when it says that, that'll be how Linda's created it. Look at that tattoo. They're all really naughty bad fairies and I love it. The attitude is immense. So this is my favourite in the book so far. This is called Doubt and it says when she sneaks up on you it's hard to make decisions. And this was a watercolour done on paper. Isn't that the truth? Now this is the one I think we are going to tackle today because she is just stunning. I love her to bits. Isn't she gorgeous? Yeah. And we all know doubt when that creeps up, don't we? So that's quite fitting, I thought. Then we've got this one, which is, oh, it's just as beautiful. Dragon's Eye. And she used, uh, this was mixed media on paper. Look at that beautiful face. Isn't she gorgeous? Leaning on that dragon. He's looking like, oh, I've so had enough of this. Get off my head. <laughs> Again, another one. Another one we probably all know very well in the colouring community because there's a lot of us 
why we started is um, anxiety and different other medical issues. This is the Insomnia Fairy. Look at her. She is beautiful. But yeah, we all know that feeling. Love it. And it says, if you can't sleep, look out for this lady. Oh, for definite. For sure. And then uh, we've got Morgan Le Fay. This is watercolour and ball pen on paper. I mean, just incredible talent. Isn't she beautiful? Look at that moon behind her. Love it. Absolutely love it. Then we've got the mur murky water fairy. Yeah, and she looks seriously badass, doesn't she? <laughs> you, yeah, you don't want to meet her, do you? Walking past a swamp or whatever. Yeah, look at all that um, seaweed or weed hanging off her hair. Yeah, she does look like she could handle herself, let's put it that way. And then we've got the Nightmare Fairy. I just wish I'd had this for Halloween because this would have been perfect. It says the Nightmare Fairy vampires do exist. Look at that. And even as though she's supposed to be really scary, she's still got a very beautiful face. I like the back covering the moon and the detail of the cloud over the moon. It's just, yeah, perfect. We've got some tombstones in the dark there. Okay. Then we've got Poison Ivy. Uh, one a little less scary. She's got, looks like her following her veins. Um, yeah, isn't she beautiful though? That's Poison Ivy. This one is Spider Weaver. Weaver of dreams and restless nights. Again, another stunning one. I love her footwear. And look at these um, spider webs. Yeah, just phenomenal. And um, this, I love this one too. <laughs> this is so true. And me on a daily basis. The Stay in Bed Fairy. One of those mornings when you just can't get out of your lovely comfy bed. And Linda did this with watercolour and ink on paper. Isn't she adorable? Now I'm struggling. Which one we do first? I really like this one too. Well, oh, you'll know by the title. I was going to say, well, I'll surprise you. Maybe I'll surprise myself. Maybe we won't do that other one. But this is quite cute. And so is that other one. Okay. The Mould Fairy. Sometimes found at the back of the fridge or on stale bread, she can sneak up at any time. <laughs> Look at her face. Look at that cheeky grin. Like, hey, you were going to have that piece of bread, were you? I don't think so. <laughs> very cool. Very, very cool. This one's called The Tree of Woe. Now, although she looks quite serene and relaxed and approachable, the tree, however, does not. That's another really cool one. Oh dear, how do you choose people? This one's called The Weed. Watch out for this sprite amongst your favourite flowers. Watercolour and ink on paper. <laughs> Look. Here I am. I'm back again. <laughs> and there we have it, folks. That's the... That's the um, 14 images, if I've counted correctly. So, the cover is the Nightmare Fairy from the original watercolour painting. Now, I have got my Neo colours out and my Prisma colours at the, at the ready. I am going to go off and choose one of those gorgeous images. I really, really like the first one we saw, the Doubt Fairy, but those other two are just... I don't know. You'll know quicker than I do. All right, my lovely friends, I will be back when I've cleared up, made a decision and got everything ready for us to get going and we'll do this colour along together. I'll see you in a little while. OK, my lovelies, it had to be this one. I've just fallen in love with so many images in here, but this one's screaming at me to do it. So what I thought we'd do, actually, is I know a lot of people are scared of grayscale. They're, they're afraid of different mediums and I thought we'd try and use mix it up and do it as if I was off camera I spend a lot of time on camera trying to stick to the same mediums so that um, people can follow along 
in this video I just want to do my best to show people that you don't have to worry about using different mediums and it's actually quite fun to do. So um, one of the things when you're a beginner is you think oh I can't follow along, I don't have prismas, I don't have polys, I don't have this, I don't have that but actually I've got the image from Linda Ravencroft on my screen, on my computer. I'm not going to show it because I don't want um, copyright. I've got it um, on my image and I'm looking at it now and I'm going to try and um, recreate it but in my own style so things will be different and that's all you need to do you know if you're following along and you don't have prismas just pick similar colours it, it really is as easy as that so I'm going to use alcohol markers, watercolour um, we're going to use pencil, we're going to use I might use nails, I'm not sure uh, we're going to use what else have I got? Oh, um, metallic watercolours and we're going to try them, see how it works. So, a while ago I brought just this Copic Chow set of portrait markers and I've never used them yet. The reason I'm using these is because lots of people have Copic. These weren't that expensive considering they're refillable um, and they're very, very good. Um, I do have the touch markers and I do have um, the Ahuhu, massive set of Ahuhu and I love them both but I'm just, I want to use these and I want to try it so before I can go any further I need to protect the underside even though they're single sided this is just like a thick sheet of acetate um, so I'm just going to put that underneath and we're going to have a look at her skin so I'm going to do a more inconspicuous area in case things go wrong. Now, this is the order they come in. I don't know if they've got names even. I haven't even looked that far. Oh yeah, they do. The Cotton Pearl E00. So I'm going to go in with the very lightest. We can always darken it up, but it's more difficult to take colour away. So if I can get it out. We are going to go in with Pale Fruit Pink. E000 and I'm going to use the brush side I know let's go in with a thigh okay are you ready folks let's do this let's be brave so this is watercolour paper so um, I wouldn't do large areas with alcohol markers because it's likely to soak them up big style but I just want a base and then just to show you we can put pencil over the top just to show you you know don't be afraid of using markers using different mediums so yeah so this video I thought do you know what what we'll do is focus on mixed media so um, I call my videos color with me because I have never felt confident enough that um, I'm going to be any good at teaching people so they've always been colour with me instead of a tutorial or anything else and what was my point people what was my point um, what was I trying to say Is that yeah a lot of people when you're learning or even when you're not get scared of mixing it up and having fun with their pages um, Include that was including me but it is really good fun folks I like these markers aren't they beautiful so I think they were £20 for this set and that's not bad if you think of how often we're re replacing sets that you can't refill and what a beautiful skin colour that is for us to go over with pencils yeah anyway I'm rambling again but my point being let's just let's just play and have fun and I want to take the fear out of grayscale that was my point and mixed media so that's the point in this video so I hope you'll enjoy it so I haven't done my little tickets today yet I might do for the pencil part of it but I'm just gonna I'm just sort of ad libbing. I am not I have not practiced this page. I want this to be I want you to see the process of 
how I, how I do things, how I play. Oh, ears. Okay. So, and the reason I thought this would be a good video today is that um, I'm working a lot of hours at school at the moment because my colleague is poorly, bless her. So, um, I wanted to do a video for you and I couldn't wait to colour in this book. So, here we are. Okay, I've put them away. We might get them out later. Who knows? Who knows, people? Let's have a look on the reverse. So it does bleed through, but not too bad. Okay, I can take the plastic sheet out. Next, we have got... I'm going to have to pull you out again a little bit so you can see her. Isn't she gorgeous? What a beautiful skin tone. So we have to let that dry. You could do this whole picture in alcohol markers. And Linda's done the shading for you, so it would look e equally as beautiful. Now, I think we will tackle the background. So I'm going to use watercolours for this. Do not be scared, people. This set of paints is a budget set of paints that I brought, I think it was £23 for this whole set. This is Meaden, and I have looked. Um, one of my lovely friends on Instagram asked me about it. It's not there anymore. But if you put Meaden watercolour palette in, a palette, you know how... Quite often we're sold different names under the same product. Do you know what I mean? Like pencils, you'll see many of the black barrel barreled pencils and they're probably exactly the same. I'm not saying they all are, so don't quote me on that. But if you look um, if you look closely, this is a set of how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 48 colours. Um, and if you look at them, they're almost exactly the same, identical. And this set does have really beautiful colours in. In fact, I actually linked my friend when I found when I was looking for the Meaden. So if they don't have them, don't panic. There are plenty of really good budget watercolour paints out there. You can use your, ne your Neos if you've got them. You can use any watercolours. You know, you don't even have to choose the colours I'm, cheap. I'm doing. I'm just showing you the process. OK, so here there are two really beautiful pinks. And the, they don't have names. And the beauty of watercolours is we can water them down, make them lighter. We can, we can make them more condensed so they're brighter. So that's what we're going to do. This background in Linda's goes from a very bright um, speckled pink in here to a very soft pink around the moon. That's what we're going to do. So give me one second. I'm going to get... I forgot my water... <laughs> And my paintbrushes, considering we're doing watercolouring, but there you go. Give me one sec. Okay, I'm back. I've got my little water basin here. <laughs> I've got one for dirty side, clean the dirty brush off. And then the other side is for um, making sure it's completely clean. Now, let me grab a brush. You can use any brush you choose. It doesn't have to be a posh one. I'm just looking through for one that I'm comfortable to use. So this is came in a set. I think they are natural bristles, but you don't have to. Um, I don't know if you'd be able to read that if I hold that up to you. It came in like a little box. Okay, I'm going to get my brush wet. And now I'm going to go in with the dark pink here. This one, the darker or the middle pink. I'm going to get that activated. I'm going to put that on my palette. That way I can control the amount that I have, the, the density of the colour. Okay. All right. Then, down, where should we start? Let's start in this free corner down here. It looks easier. I'm actually going to wet the paper. So it's got a little bit of pink on it, but that's okay. So I'm going to wet the paper. That will dry almost nothingness. So I hadn't cleaned my brush properly. So I'm just going to wet the paper all up round here. You could actually put a bit of washi tape up that edge to stop that going over. Okay easy people easy then we're going to dip into that color that we've mixed okay I'm going to take a little bit on my brush 
and where the dark patches are let's come in so you can see this closer where these dark patches are I am going to put in our darker of the pinks and literally I am not painting there's not any sort of um, skill I'm just following Linda's dark spots and it might look a mess now but it won't I'm just going to keep going with that and if I'd have wet it a bit more I'd have got that nice granulated look you know where it spreads out so but we're just going to do that <clears throat> follow Linda's dark spots we can have some even more intense colour down here and if you want it to spread you can just add a little bit more water More. There's a bit dark patch, darker patch there. Bring that edge down. Okay. All right. So while I've got the dark, I'm going to do it with the other side of the page. We're going to have to let that dry. Um, let me clean my brush off, and we're going to wet this side. This we can do in pencil. All the detail of our beautiful dress. But I'm going to make sure that the page is nice and wet. Come right up here. And even though it's watercolour paper I would recommend that you let it dry in between. So don't just go piling in there and then because you'll be upset because you will ruin your paper. Even watercolour paper will pill if you keep working it. So I'm just dropping that in where Linda's given us our darkest and you might have to go in two or three times and build up colour you see that spreading out because the page is nice and wet okay. All right. then I'm going to take that the lighter of the two colours that I showed you. I'm going to mix a little bit up of that on the palette. So I'm literally, when I say mixing it up, I'm activating it and putting it on the palette. Then we're going to start, we're going to come in and we're going to drop that in. At the moment it doesn't look any different to me. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but that's the beauty, we can go back in. It doesn't matter. So I might need to lighten that up further, so I'm just putting some more water in it. Just so that it's not so bright pink. Well, there is a difference. You can see it when it dries, look. And then I'm just going to bring that and spread that up the page. Okay. Straight over those details because we can colour over it with pencil. I'm going to leave that because it's... Um, I've roughed the page up slightly, so you do have to be careful. Then we're going to do it here. A bit more paint, or a bit of a brighter pink. There we go. We're just going to, I'm going straight over that because we're going to use pencil over there, but I want a pink background. So, there we go. I know that's a dress, but the same thing applies. Then I'm just going to water it down so we get a lighter colour. And go in. Same up here, around the moon. And then join that up with that dark colour there. that is going to be our background. So I'm just going to keep going and bring that up here. 
while I've got that colour mixed so that the page is um, the same you might find that you run out of that colour and you can't get that tone again but in this background that's absolutely fine because it's a blotchy background here we go Yes, you could put washi tape around there so that your edges stay nice and crisp and white. But if you don't have any, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's go in with a little bit of more of that dark stuff, filling those blotches up there. Some of that nice intense pink, drop that in. Make sure we've covered where Linda's put the dark. Just put a bit of water on my brush, help that spread out. And it will do its own thing. And it will settle and look amazing. Okay. We've got some dark around here. Some dark here. Yeah, I'm gonna go back in with the light stuff. Like this side. And I'm gonna water down the light stuff even further. And just drop that on there and let the water spread it about. The intense pink up here. I'll just put my hand in it. Marvellous. Oh, what a shame. That looked nice. Never mind. Yeah, don't put your hand in it, folks. All right, let's get some of that intense pink. I need a bit of it up here. So that's really not. Um, Alright, we're going to go over that. It's really not... What am I trying to say? Yeah, it's nothing that you can't do. Just dab your paintbrush on and be brave. Let it do it. Make sure you've got enough water. And it will spread and do its own thing. And of course watercolour will dry lighter than when it goes on the page. I hope you're not bored by watching this. I just want to get this bit done. If I stop now, then, like I say, I might not be able to mix the same colour. I'm not going to get the same effect with while well, the paper's wet. I'm going to come around this. Oh, just throw my brush across the room. We're going to come around this moon, darken that up. Around this edge. Okay. I'm going to take a bit more of the lighter paint and fill this in. Let's lighten that right up there. Real sloppy water there. So you don't need to add white. You can, but you don't need to. If you add more water, it'll just dilute it and the colour will become lighter. There we go. I'm going to draw that along there. And I'm going to tidy this edge up. So I think I'm going to entitle this video, Don't Be Afraid of Grayscale. And what else could I put? I don't know. What else are we doing? We are just going to, this is just plain water now. Because that will give a lush effect. Um, what else are we doing? We're trying mixed media. So I could just title it, Don't Be Afraid of Mixed Media and Grayscale. Whatever. It will be one of those. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to leave that background to dry because I don't want to overwork it. Let's put that there for a minute. 
Let's come out so you can see everything. So can you see already that looks really effective? And we might not need to do any more, but what I would do is let that dry and go back in again, you get even more intense colours. And you could mix other colours in there too. Um, so what I'm going to do is let that dry. The moon, we're going to use the Artex, not Artex, yeah, I'm sorry, Arteza metallic watercolours. We're going to do that. We're going to use, um, I might as well, use a light coat of something over, I don't know. I'll see what else I can pull out so we can play with those. All right, my beautiful friends. I'm going to let that dry, then we'll come back, we'll get the moon done, and we'll work on her. See you in a little while. Okay, folks, it's dried, and I just love the water effect on it. You know, it, well, it's not completely dry, it's a bit damp there. But we're going to leave that for the time being, and I'm going to let it carry on drying. And we're going to focus on her skin, and the reason being is then we want to put the moon in the back that um, hopefully any wax will repel the water. So, I have got these colours. So come on in and have a look. Let's have a look. Okay. Where should we start? Let's start just with her thigh, since we're here. So these are the colours that I've got. I've got Burnt Ochre, Deco Peach and Blush Pink. The Blush Pink will be for her um, cheeks. And I might need a bit of pink everywhere else. So we're going to use the Burnt Ochre. And where Linda has put the shadow, which makes it completely stress-free for us. And this is why Grayscale is so good if you're learning to colour. We are going to put that a light coat of this burnt ochre on top. Now don't go pressing heavy because you just want that as an undertone for her skin. For the shadow in her skin, that's all. Okay. Then I'm going to sharpen my Deco Peach. We're going to go over that with our deco peach and we're going to blend that in to that beautiful copic marker now i've always used polychromos in um linda's books purely because they're watercolor paper and i was a bit concerned about you know having that um grainy effect left behind but as you can see, they're doing a beautiful job. Okay, so we're going to blend that through and we're going to soften that out until it disappears into that beautiful Copic marker. And that will give us our highlight and cover the grayscale. See? Not scary, is it? Okay, we can go back in now. We've got a little bit of a wax base on. We're going back in with our burnt ochre. Just gently. Around those shadowed areas. Okay, just a little bit. Back in with our Deco Peach. Actually, don't think we're going to need the pink because against the Copic, the Deco Peach looks quite pink. Okay. That is Deco Peach, isn't it? I'm using. Yeah. It does look quite pink. But it won't. When we get the other colours around her. When you first do skin, and you, usually if I'm doing a picture, I like to start on the skin, unless I'm doing watercolour and then I put a background in. Um, it always looks um, maybe too bright or, but it will tone down when you put other colours around it, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, we've got a thigh. Look at that. Easy, easy, easy. Three colours, four colours with the Copic marker. Should we do a face together? 
Okay, so again, <clears throat> we're going to go in, in where the shadows are with our lightly, lightly with our burnt ochre. Really lightly. Like I said, we can always go back in and add more, but it's much more difficult to take it away. Okay, we're going to do a bit round here. We are going to come round on her cheek because that will give us our, her colour around her hairline I'm going to put a bit in there because that would be a bit darker under that hair around her eyes and you will watch her come to life very quickly ok alright now, Deco Peach, and we're going to do the same. We're going to blend that through. And all I've done is followed where Linda's given us that colour. And then we're just going to pull it out. And let it fade into that beautiful Copic marker. We're going to get our highlights that way and a little bit more tone in our skin and realism and then and that my lovelies is it okay we will take the blush pink and I am just gonna sharpen it let's give her a little bit more color shall we And like I say, later on, if you feel like she's too washed out, we can add more colour when we've put the moon and all the rest of it on her. But for now, let's leave it as a safe bet. So that was the blush pink. Let's get back in with the deco pink. Let's leave it with a leave it her. Let's leave it as a safe bet and just play safe until we've got the other colours down. Just a bit more deco pink. There we are. And that is how I'm going to do her skin. Let's do an ear together. So, burnt ochre. A little bit in there. So, the lighter the shading, the lighter your pencil work. The darker the shading, the darker your pencil work. That's all grayscale is. And it makes life very easy, particularly if you're learning to shade. Something I've never really mastered is light and dark. Now, I want, but I bet I can't find. There we go. No, I don't want that. I have a bit of white. Let's have a bit of white. I'm just going to sharpen it. Now, here we go. A little bit of white. And I'm just going to bring, there's a highlight there. I'm going to bring that out. And down here. Okay. Then we can go back in with our Deco Peach. Lightly go over that. And that way we get to keep those areas of lighter. <coughs> okay. That's it. Skin. Easy. So round the shoulder is a very light bit look of burnt ochre. And dark a bit round here and under our arm. So we're gonna I'm gonna follow that to the letter. I'm not changing Linda's work because she is the expert as you can see. All right, let me go and finish the skin. Then we're going to come back and we'll put the moon in. All right, folks, see you in a second. Okay, guys, I've finished the skin. As simple as we said. Nothing. I haven't added any other colours. Just the white. Kept it very simple. We are going to tackle the moon before we go any further because that's going to have to dry. 
and we are going to use the gorgeous set from Arteza. These are another budget um, supply, but my goodness, they are gorgeous. If you haven't seen these before, look at the shimmer on those. They are gorgeous. So what I think I'm going to do is paint it with the diamond white, which is this colour, which I'm going to have to clean out first, because I'm going to spray it. Um, and the gold, I think. Diamond white and gold. So let me clean out that paint because it's got a lot of smush in there. A lot of blue. I don't want to contaminate the picture. So just clean that out. And then I'm going to put some, drop some more water in it. Clean water and let that sit for a second. So my plan is, while we let that sit and just soak in for a minute, my plan is, on here, um, Linda has given us little dark patches for the moon. Now, I'm no good at moons. I don't know anything about stars much. But what I am plan to do is to put the diamond white all round in the background. And then we're going to splodge some of the, maybe the gold and the Aztec gold in when it's dry. So... I have got, I'm just putting a little bit of that diamond white, which is just a beautiful moon shimmery colour. What I've done is took the white um, Prisma, any white wax crayon you've got, and I've just gone round the edge of the moon. I've just drawn round it. Hopefully that will keep any of this colour from spilling into the background and vice versa when we go back over the background. So I'm going to put this diamond white in. So you're not going to see much at the moment, um, apart from a, a gorgeous shimmer. A gorgeous moonlight shimmer. And then when we splodge in the, um, when we splodge in the darker golds, I'm hoping that it will spread out beautifully. All right. Okay, we'll put that in here. That'll wash out that pink that we put in, but it doesn't matter. The pink that I got over the edge, should I say? Not we, you didn't do it. <laughs> okay. Now, obviously, like I say, you're not going to see much right now. Because it is, if I lift it up, Hopefully you'll get in that shimmer. So I am now going to drop in, I think we're going to use a bit of gold. Let's go with a traditional gold. So I'm just dropping some water in there. It's got a little bit of that silver shimmer in it, but it doesn't matter. And that's how quickly, look, they activate. So I'm just going to put it on the palette. You can let it sit longer and then they're uber creamy. So I'm going to put a bit of that there, drop a bit of water on, let it sit for a second. Let's clean my brush off so we don't have too much water on it. Here we go, look at that. We'll mix that in, let's get some nice intense gold, shall we? Okay. Here we go, just keep mixing because I want that intensity of colour. All right, let's try that. Now, round our head, we've got some. So we're going to drop that in. And we, I'm just going to let it do its own thing. I'm not going to worry about it. Her hair will go over. It's fine. Equally not going to worry about it. Okay. There we go. I'm, I'm just, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I'm literally just putting it down where Linda's given us darks again. It's quite pale darks, but they're there. And I'm just plopping it in those spaces. So dark parts of the moon. It might look a bit weird now, but it won't. So more gold. We've got some dark here. A 
water. Let's get some more mixed up. Nice. Okay. Just dropping some in. So we've got, which is nice about watercolour, and the way it's actually happened here, it's going to have some bits that are more intense, other bits that are lighter. Really cool. Okay, then I'm going to get the Aztec Gold, which is our really dark one. And I'm just mixing that up, same as I did before. Let's get that really intense colour. It's more of a coppery colour, the Aztec Gold. So I'm going to be a bit more sparing with this. And we're going to just drop that into certain places, not too much. Let's just... And then we're going to go back with that shimmer afterwards, that, um, that silvery shimmer stuff. I'm not going to worry about that because we're going to go over with pencil on our hair. Let's get some more of that colour. Doesn't that work well, folks? Just a few splodges here and there. Different colours. I'm going to go back to the original gold here and I'm going to put that in here because that's gone a bit dark. Okay, dry my brush off because it's too dark and I'm going to lift some. So I'm just going to put a dry brush on there and lift some of that colour off. Easy. I hope you can see all this because I didn't zoom in. And then I'm going to go back with our lighter gold, put that in. No. Okay, let's get that silver shimmer paint. See if we can get that to stand out a bit more. I might need, actually, right, here we go. Let's take the silver shimmer, or diamond white it's called, and mix that with that pale... Let's mix that with that pale gold, that gold, the just gold, let's mix that up. That way we'll have a nice light gold, but enough to show, because the diamond one is just not showing up enough. Let's put a diamond there, let's try that. There we go, that's better. That's better. We'll just drop it in there. Go right up to that pencil. Okay, back into our little mix. Not the band, folks, not the band. <laughs> oh, I was in such a stupid mood today. Sorry about that, folks. My stupid bad gags. <coughs> I think that's going to dry terrific. There we go. I think that's going to look really cool. The key, I think, let me lift that up and show you. So, there we are. And I think the key is to stop messing. It's taken me a long time to learn this. Stop messing. When um, you think you have a little bit of success, if you're happy with it, just stop messing. So I'm just drying my brush off on the kitchen towel. We're going to let that completely dry. Um, because it's watercolour paper, it does take a bit of time, but I like to air dry it and that way it doesn't go so crinkly. All right, gonna let that completely dry and then we will meet back up and we'll get her dressed, shall we? All right, folks, see you in a minute. All right, she's more or less dry. I did a little bit more work on the background just to darken it up in some patches and went round that white edge on the moon. Okay, so if we tip it, can you get, oh, get a load of that. Oh, teaser paint. <laughs> Good thing of the name. So I have got, um, just because we're doing different mediums and I want a very pale pink and they've got a beautiful pink in here, I'm using the Neo Colour 2s and we'll bring her in. 
could have used alcohol markers as a base you could use whatever mediums you've got and I'm gonna do her well actually I say I'm gonna do her the wonderful Linda Ravenscroft has done her in pinks so this is gonna be I'm gonna come out of it this is gonna be just our undertone now I've got a Karen Dash palette board here one side has got a rough texture and the other side is shiny and smooth um, we're going to use the rough text texture and I am going to put, let me just hold this up make sure you can see, salmon pink and I'm just scribbling it on the board. There. Alright, no mixing, no fuss. Now I am going to go over her entire outfit. So I've got plain water and I'm activating it on my palette board with my paintbrush. Plain water, nothing fancy. Um, and we are going to cover her entire outfit. Well, that's a little bit of skin poking through her tights there, I missed that. I'll have to go back and fix that. And So this is just because I want to show you you know, whatever mediums you've got, you can do this in, basically. So I'm just painting over that. And then we'll use pencil to go over and put our detail in. This will dry much paler. But it's a very different colour, very different pink to the background, which is what I needed. I'm going to go over that. We can use some gel pen for the detail, like on our bands and our headband. And we'll merge that into that pink down there. Can you see everything? I think so. Okay. Now you can erase some of this dark if you want to make it much lighter. You can use an eraser and it will lift some of the darkness. I quite like it, you know. <clears throat> Okay, and wings. So just getting that on there, and we're going to have wings. I'm going to put a bit more water. That way, it will be a lighter colour, as we've learned today. We can get some gel pens out and have a bit of. Okay. Right, her hair's very dark, so that's going to be hard to put any, like, sort of pale colours in it. So I'm going to get a Neo Colour Brown, I think. Let's see what browns we've got. We'll do her hair like that. Linda's done it brown. Just going to use that up. Take a kitchen towel and just wipe the board off. Right. Got a dry board. What browns have we got? We've got a just a brown, that would be nice. Let's see. Um, I'll try and find it now, folks. This is what happens when you just haven't practiced and you're just rolling with it. Here we go. So we have got just plain brown from the Neo Colour twos. Okay. So again. I'm going to scribble it on my board, take my brush, activate it, make sure it's all thoroughly activated, some little bits in there so I'm just making sure that they're activated and we're just going to go in with our hair and it will sink in where it can. Now you can spend a long time doing this and putting all that detail in. We can go back in with pencil, but I don't really think it's that it's that necessary. We can get a pencil that matches. We can put some detail in those bits, those wispy bits that are sticking out. you'll see with Linda's shading and just painting 
over the top of the wonderful effect that we get. And this is why I wanted to show you because I don't want people to be afraid of Let's lift that up. Grayscale and work like this because it's so simple. And it works with whatever mediums you've got. So I know we've used a lot of water mediums, but we've also used pencil. I don't need to show you every different style of pencil for you to realise that it works. Okay. If we do all that hair, all that hair. All right. Let's pick a Prisma. I'm just going to clean that board off case we need it again. Let's pick a Prisma and see, well actually we won't be able to, so we're going to have to wait for it to dry. So I'm going to get my Copic out, I'm going to do that bit of skin, poking through her tights. I'm going to have to let that dry. So this is the hardest bit of colouring is the waiting. Now if you now try and colour over her you're going to ruin it. That has to be completely dry before we put pencils over the top which is why I'm going on off, on off, on off. But I'm going to go and choose some beautiful pinks pencils. I'll stick with Prismas because that's what we've started with. We're going to pick some, I might put some like gel, gel pen speckles on the background um, just so that we've covered different mediums all right folks let me let her dry completely and then we'll be back okay you lovely lot she is completely dry because it is the next day so we're going to try doing the wings and the dress and her stockings and i'm using linda's colors but i've just changed them slightly so that they're mine. <laughs> They're still the same colours, but um, all the same. They're pink, <laughs> but I've just changed the colours. So, we've got pomegranate. We're going to use that if necessary, but we're going to do a stocking. So, I want to try using pink and blush pink to start with so that we don't go too dark. Why have I moved that out of your way? I don't know. Will you be able to see it there? Yes. Okay. So our pink is the darkest at the moment. We might have to put um, pomegranate in. I'm definitely going to put those in in the wings, but I want you to see if we could do the rest of her pale. So we're going to put start by putting pink in our darkest spots. So around her little toes on her stockings. We'll see if it works. If I feel we need, need more contrast, then we can go in with a different colour. Putting the little toes in. Okay, let's try then and blend that with blush pink. Because we've already got that lovely soft neo colour down. So we don't need an awful lot, I just want some shading in there. So let's merge those two. Let's we'll see how it goes. And if we, if I feel like I say we need some more contrast in there, I can add the pomegranate. Let's put in the dark round here. My house has just got a bit of shading here. Look, just checking you can see. Okay, round here. the shape of her leg. Bring that out a little bit. Definitely around her, her little knee. And she's got a rip in her tights or her stockings. There we go. Okay, let's blend that in now with the uh, blush pink See what happens. We'll blend that into that. Let that 
those two colours blend and then we'll blend it in and use the Neo Colour as our highlight. So let's do all the bits that we know are darker, go back over those and use the blush pink to blend that through. just going to go lightly lightly over the Neo and see if we can just blend that out. I think that's actually is going to work. What do you think, folks? I think that's actually going to work. So keep working over that. Make sure we filled in all the white pieces of the paper. The tooth, rather. Been a long day at work, folks. I think that's going to work, actually. Okay. We're going to need to do a bit more smooth then. Well, I'm going to need to do a bit more smooth then. Out. But I, I like it. I think that's going to... I think that's going to work. So in the wings, they're very dark. So we are going to put the pome pomegranate in there. So I'm just going to swizzle you around a minute. Let's get a dark bit, so let's try this. Let's go in here. So we stick that pomegranate in. And I'm actually going to use gel pen around the edge of her wing, I think. I'm going to keep that dark. And into there. Then let's put the pink. Just keep that for the very darkest bits. That pomegranate. Then we'll take our blush pink and just push that into the neo colour. Okay. We'll take pink for this bit. Pink for these dark bits. Add in the pomegranate in the very black bits because that will cover it up. I'm just going to leave a tiny gap at the bottom to blend into that pink. Yeah, and then take our blush pink and pull that out. detail back in. Okay, straighten her back up now. Okay. So let's put that deep in there like that. Okay. So I'm just going to follow where it's darkest and just keep and switch between the pomegranate and the pink. What do we think? Hmm. Let's do some more. 
um, the pink in this detail. Cover up that dark. Okay, then again our pomegranate on the blackest part of the wing. I'll save it just a little bit to push that pink in. There we go. And then we'll go get the blush pink. I'm just playing until I feel happy with the colour. I actually quite like that dark pomegranate in there, actually. <clears throat> I might just streak a bit through there. the dark. Yeah. That right, so uh, this is what I'm, this is the thought process. So just playing. I'm gonna put more pomegranate in because I like it on the darker areas. Down a bit further. Sorry if I'm quiet, I'm just thinking about. Some more dark in there. I like it because a dress is going to be a dress is like very soft pink. So I think we can get away with adding some real brightness in here. Okay, that's how we're going to do the wings. Oh, that's how I'm doing the wings. There we go. I like that. Then we can take the white and just push that through on the lighter parts. Okay. Yeah, I like it. And then what I'm going to do is take my Jelly Roll pen. This is a uh, 1-0 pen. I like the way they, they um, work better. They don't get so clogged so quickly. And I'm going to really brighten up those veins of her wings with white. Uh, like that. Obviously I have to wait till the whole thing's done, but... Can you see? Yeah. And just take out any of those black lines. Alright. That looks cool, yeah. So we'll have, let's come out and have a look, the contrast between the very pale pink of her, um, let's blend that in a bit, the very pale pink of her dress and tights. I'm just going to put some white there so that when I put the pink over it, it will stay that nice pale colour. 
Let's just put the blush pink back over it. Yeah, so I think the contrast between that wing and the paleness of her dress and tights will look really cool. Okay, and we can put some white around there, bring that out. Really bring our highlights out. Right, okay, so we're going to do the same with the dress. So the dress will be pink and blush pink. If I can get them apart. So, we've got the darkest parts here. So I'm going to go in with pink and let that blend into that watercolour at the bottom. So we're only doing the darkest parts with the pink. Then we're going to come in with the blush pink. So dark around here. And in there. Definitely in there, look. Really dark there. I hope this is making sense. This is how I tackle grayscale. So we use the darkest of our colours to go over the darkest grayscale part. Then go in with our medium colour and because we've already got that soft pink from the Neo, I'm just going to use the blush pink to blend into that. So I'm finding the, the parts that um, are the medium grey. I'm just going in there with that blush pink and using it to blend out that first colour. And then we can take the white, go in where that Neo's left. Like this. Bear with me a second. Like that. Really put our highlights back in. <clears throat> then I take the blush pink again. Go over that so it's not so stark, but yet very soft. How's that? It's going to look cool, isn't it? And I like how it's just sort of all blending into that background. A dark bit here, there's a pattern here. Now Linda's got hers as green, but I'm just going to go over it with pink. There we are. Just colour that in. Okay, so dark on that edge, through those creases, dark around here, okay, under there, then in with the blush pink. Not really many highlights there, just lighter, so we go over that with a blush pink. Put a little bit of a highlight on the edge of the dress there. Take out that black blush pink. Same here. We'll put some white in. And that dress again. Okay, and I might even completely black, uh, completely white out the black lines on her dress and everything afterwards okay I hope that makes sense folks so we're gonna I'm gonna finish the dress I'm gonna leave that part and the headband and her arms I might do that with gel pen I'm not sure yet I'm gonna finish the wings and then 
we will meet back up and we'll finish her off together. Alright, I'll see you in a sec. Okay guys, I'm finally back. It's taken me a week to get this out and I thought it would be a really quick video but because I've been working extra hour, hours as my colleague is ill, um, I've just been exhausted. So, here she is. Now, I thought we'll throw another medium at it and these are the Artex metallic paint pens. And they're gorgeous and I've got this lovely purple. It comes out of this set which I was kindly gifted and I love it. Um, I really adore the Artex products and this is, I've done it in the lid actually I think, this purple and oh sorry about that, oh, gosh, blurry camera, look at that shine, they're lovely. So just to throw another medium at it, these have got the brush tip and then they've got a bullet tip for more control. So I am going to give her armband a touch of Artex Magic. There we go. Works beautifully on this paper too. Look at that. And we're going to put it in the little diamonds on a dress. here and on a headband. I'm going to go straight over the headband and then when it's dry we can go back over with pencil. Okay I think the other thing that I did was took the dark umber and just did a, um, the, the little bits in her hair. And around here. I didn't do an awful lot, but just like if I painted over bits or wanted bits a bit darker. Look here. There we are. Okay, now, stickles, let me get it. Diamond stickles, my very, very favourite. And I am going to go round that white outline on her wings because my pen was dying and it doesn't look that great. So I'm going to just squeeze it out, follow that white line. you can have shimmery fairy wings like this now when it's dry I was thinking that I might splatter some um, maybe some gold or something like that over the page. I don't know whether I will or not, but it was just a thought. I thought it might look quite nice. But for a mixed media page, I hope I've shown you that it doesn't need to be scary. And certainly grayscale's not anything to be worried about. There we go, nearly there. pick up on that are very very glittery I don't know if you can pick it up you've got the metallic background the stickles you'll usually see better when they're dry um, let's see if that's dry okay so I'm going to take that dark umber and just go back over her headband And we need a little bit of effect in our eyes, so if we come down, so you can see, I'm just taking this dark umber and I'm 
just going to give her a little bit of eyebrows. Um, eyelashes. We need a colour in there. What should we go for? I'm not giving her pink eyes, people. No, can't have pink. Let's see. What about some? Hmm, let's see. What about if we use um, electric blue and non-photo blue and we put those in our eyes? Because they're a tiny space. Let's try that. Just a little bit of colour. There we go. And I'm just going to mix a little bit of the non photo blue in. Just to brighten that up even further. Just needs a bit of colour. Oh, that's worked well. Look at that. Okay, then we'll go back in with a jack, oh, a jack, a black gel pen. This is just a normal jelly roll black gel pen. I'm going to go back over our pupils. Our pupils where I've coloured over that. And then we'll want white gel pen if it's working. I'll just put the highlights back in. There we go. There. All right, let's come out and have a look. There she is, folks. I'm thrilled with her. I think she's beautiful. I love, oh, I really hope you can see all that shimmer from the moon and the stickles. She's just so beautiful. So, there we are. That's my please don't be afraid of grayscale and using mixed medias. I really hope you've enjoyed it, folks. I will let you go. Um, I think we've been very long on this video. <laughs> it was supposed to be short and easy. But um, I will let you go. I'll be back. I've got RJ Hansen's new Christmas book and I can't wait to get Christmas colouring. All right, my lovely friends. Thank you so, so much for watching. And until we meet again really soon, take really good care of yourselves. Night, night.